welcome all of you in the last couple of classes we started discussing about heteronuclear 2d experiments wherein we discussed a lot about hsqc which stands for heteronuclear single quantum coherence or correlation whatever you call and hmbc both we discussed in the hsqc you can correlate between two dilute or two spins heteronuclear spin one is an abundant spin and the other is a dilute spin that what we saw and of course it can be done for any between any two heteronuclei in hsqc what is done is there is a polarization transfer from abundant spin to rare spin and then during the t1 period we apply 180 pulse so that we break the heteronuclear coupling and then transfer the magnetization back to proton and detect proton while decoupling carbon 13 or 15 n15 n or any other heteronuclei and there is a very simple one and we also understood there is a, st a strong interference from the c12 attached proton signal in carbon 13 or n14 attached from in nitrogen 15 when if these parent signal need to be suppressed for that we adapted what is called a phase cycling method or pulse field gradients both are possible and then we observed varieties of experiments we can do in the hsqc you can do the decoupling in one dimension f1 or f2 or decoupling in both the dimensions or don't do decoupling in any dimension so there are varieties of experiments are possible we took the example of a simple molecule and saw how the spectrum comes how we can interpret the hsqc spectrum based on the coupling pattern especially and when we get a one bond coupling coupled spectrum and the decoupled exp experiment we we broke the coupling between carbon and proton and we knew how to interpret in the way, one dimension you are going to get the het carbon or nitrogen 15 chemical shift and other dimension abundant spin like proton or fluorine that chemical shift we are going to get and in case there is a, there are homonuclear coupling present in the molecule i also gave one or two example to see how we can get the uh, proton proton couplings also from the hsqc spectrum analogous to what you are going to get, get in the analysis of the satellite spectrum of proton satellite proton spectrum of a dilute spin if it is present that's what we observed similarly we extended our interpretation for hmbc with the multiple bond correlation where there is a correlation between the abundant spin the dilute spin which are separated by 2 to 3 bonds away in which case again we can have two types of spectra coupled and decoupled i also i told you in the hmbc most of the time we are going to we don't do the decoupling we get the coupled spectrum that's what we are going to uh, observe that and then of course hmbc there is one adva one thing there are two filters one is the accept other the reject filter accept filter filter is the one where the long range correlations are allowed through, allowed through and reject filter is the one where one bond hsqc like type correlations are rejected that will not be allowed through and of course this can be done by several methods and of course we can suppress the proton 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 coupling by using bird sequence we can also have the constant the constant time experiments and we you can do phase cycling varieties of experiments we can think of all of them we discuss with many examples we also and analyze varieties of spectra both hsqc and hmbc they are, they are all only heteronuclear correlation one at least is an abundant spin now i will go today we'll go into a different experiment where we are going to see the correlation between two dilute spins this is what we are going to start today for example this experiment is called two dimensional inadequate experiment as i always say inadequate you know one should have adequate knowledge of nmr to understand this of course it stands for incredible natural abundance double quantum transfer experiment it is called inadequate experiment this is where we are going to discuss today of course as i told you in the 2d correlation experiments cosi toxi we always correlate homonuclear abundant spins to the of course we also have a nuclear correlation the, like hetcar uh, we also have inverse experiment like hsqc and hmbc where the experiment is done faster and correlates heteronuclear spin where we saw only in the correlation example at least one of them is a the abundant spin other is the dilute spin all right the, now we come across a situation let us think of a molecule where you have several carbons present in that 
I want to see which carbon is coupled to which carbon. Or in other words, in a given uh, molecule, carbon structure or carbon skeleton of a molecule, if I want to identify which carbon is sitting next to which carbon or which carbon is bonded to the next carbon, how do you do that? This is a correlation experiment which you have to do. Remember, both carbon 13 is in natural abundance and 2D correlation of natural abundance is extremely difficult. Whereas, in the two dimensional inadequate experiment, we can do something and we can understand what we can do, how we can do, where we can correlate two carbon 13 spins in the natural abundance. Very interesting thing. Okay. And why we have to do this type of experiment? Of course, why we can't do direct determination of carbon carbon connectivity? As you already know, it is not easy to determine. Carbon is already 1 percent, simultaneously seeing two carbons present as carbon 13 is very difficult. And to see the connection, correlation between these two carbons to establish that in a two dimensional experiment is a difficult task. It is a very, very challenging task. So, as a consequence what is done is it is determined usually through protons indirectly like HSQC experiment transfer the magnetization to proton and uh, proton to carbon and then take it back and see what happened during this process like that. One of the of course, problem with the, uh, this type of two table two D inadequate experiment is it requires longer instrument time because we are detecting remember carbon 13 natural abundance carbon 13 carbon 13 correlation and in addition to that you require enormous quantity of the sample, large quantity of the samples are required so that you can acquire the data faster. So, this is a very difficult task of course, in finally, if I have to do it only option left over for me is inadequate. It is last option when we do that experiment we can establish correlation bit between two dilute spins. Of course, I uh, already told you when we were, we were analyzing the carbon 13 NMR spectra the possibility of seeing two carbons in the carbon 13 state in a given molecule both the carbons is 1 in 10,000 because 1 percent abundance each carbon is 1, one in 100 abundance. So, probability is a joint probability of seeing both the carbons as carbon 13 is 1 in 10,000 very very small. So, possibility of seeing more than two I told you already we, when we discuss carbon 13 is 1 over 10,000 to again 1 over 100 one in a million very difficult. So, it is it is like telling this type of uh, possibility of seeing more than two carbons simultaneously is difficult. So, we will at least try to find out the possibility of seeing two carbons in the carbon 13 state. It is like detecting carbon 13 third carbon 13 correlation in a given molecule is analogous to detecting carbon 13 satellites in the carbon 13 spectrum. Remember, remember carbon 13 is 1 percent abundant and the, the direct detection of itself is very weak, very less sensitive and if you want to see carbon 13 satellites in carbon 13 itself, imagine a hypothetical situation how difficult it is, it is exactly analogous to that. Okay. Of course, major hurdle when I have to try to do the carbon 13 carbon 13 correlation is the parent signal from the main carbon main signal because that is always present and if you want to see the coupling or correlation between two carbon 13 each individual isotopomer has carbon 13 in carbon 13 state that gives a parent signal that has to be suppressed okay that is a very important thing then it is possible for us to establish correlation between two carbons and the two carb coupled carbons you can consider as a two AX as a consider as an AX spin system when the two carbons are coupled. Generally of course, chemical shifts is quite large uh, let us say if you say even 10 ppm or 20 ppm if it is a 20 ppm in carbon 13 even, even if it is 400 mega spectrometer 20 into 100 it is going to be 2000 couplings are very small 30, 40, 50 hertz, 100 hertz it is you can consider fairly weakly coupled or sometimes AB, but most of the time we have seen it can be treated like a two weakly coupled AX spin system. Okay. Then what we can do is we have if I have two weakly coupled spin system 
there are four possible spin states that we have been discussing alpha 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 beta beta alpha beta beta and the transition from alpha alpha to alpha beta alpha alpha to beta beta is not allowed because a double quantum twice the energy is required but somehow we can select the pathway we can field take the spins instead of single quantum to a double quantum state filter it bring it back to you after applying a double quantum filter bring it back to minus 1 state and then start detecting the signal this is exactly what we did in double quantum filtered cosy dqf cosy similar to that if i can use double quantum filter i can efficiently suppress singlets coming from individual carbons that parent signal can be suppressed very easily that's one way so we that's why it is called double quantum you know inadequate insensitive nucleate double quantum filtered experiment we call it and this is an inadequate sequence of course you may ask me a question why only doublet double quantum not double double quantum why not higher quantum of course there is no need for it because beyond double quantum is the, the possibility of three carbons existing is one in million i told you so we, there is no need to worry about it so only double quantum filter is just sufficient even triple quantum also can filter single like parent signals but double quantum is just sufficient we don't need to worry more this is a inadequate sequence just by looking at the sequence you can always understand of course this is a very sim simpler sequence you can uh, looking at the sequence you can imagine what is that it like a spin echo sequence any pulse any uh, you know if you have 180 pulse with a delay on either side you can think of like a spin echo like sequence and then of course you have evolution period t1 apply rf pulse for detection and start collecting the signal of course this is more about details about selection of what is called the pathway coherence transfer pathway always you know coherence when magnetization is z along z axis is considered as you know coherent pathway is zero okay and then we can take it to zero single quantum by applying a 90 degree pulse a 190 degree pulse will you know take the magnetization either plus 1 or minus 1 pathway and then when it comes like this we can also use this by applying a 180 pulse at the middle we can take this plus 1 or minus 1 to either plus 2 or minus 2 and then from plus 2 or minus 2 of course we always detect the signal at minus 1 that's what i always tell so we bring the magnetization from plus 2 state to minus 1 state by using either the gradients of appropriate strength we know how to select it or we can use phase cycling select a particular coherence transfer pathway this is what is called coherence transfer pathway selection i am i have not discussed this in course but in one of the previous courses it was extensively discussed those who are interested can see that this is the basically a pulse sequence and in uh, if you want to understand conceptually what is happening is like this after applying a 90 pulse you have a homonuclear spin echo in this case we are applying on carbon 13 we are worried about homonuclear spin echo on carbon 13 in this case what will happen carbon 13 the chemical sheets are refocused please remember i discussed about homonuclear spin echo and heteronuclear spin echo in the case of homonuclear spin echo always chemical sheets are refocused whereas j couplings continue to evolve that's what you, you always remember and this is what is happening and afterwards we are going to apply 90 degree pulse then this uh, after this uh, after apply 90 degree pulse during this time what is going to happen the double quantum evolution takes place what is the double quantum the double quantum always evolves at the sum of the chemical shifts now i consider two carbons let us say carbon 1 and carbon 2 if i consider this has one chemical shift this has one chemical shift always double quantum evolves at sum of the chemical shifts and the separation between them gives rise to some of the coupling between the active and passive couplings but anyway that all don't worry about all those thing in the multiple quantum techniques which i discussed in one of the previous courses extensively i discussed about multiple quantum methodologies how do you do excite and detect multiple quantums of homonuclear heteronuclear spins etc but you remember one thing after the spin echo sequence we apply 90 degree pulse and during this t1 period double quantum evolution takes place where the carbons evolve at the sum of their individual chemical shifts afterwards we apply another pulse 
it is a detection pulse 90 degree pulse which converts the double quantum into single quantum because you always detect single quantum we cannot directly detect double quantum. So, it is converted into single quantum we collect the free induction decay and of course, this this is all about gradients everything for selection of coherent pathway you do not worry about it basically you worry about only this part of the pulse sequence, but you can always see at the top what is happening is we are applying a radio frequency pulse on proton it is a decoupling power we are continuously decoupling proton while doing this experiment there is a lot of advantage for it ok. So, this is the basic thing decoupler pulse also gives rise to what is called NOE. So, we are going to do this type of experiment inadequate is a very simple experiment a, a spin echo sequence followed by 90 degree pulse where double quantum evolution takes place and apply another one the 90 degree pulse convert double quantum to single quantum detect the signal while continuously decoupling proton all through the pulse sequence e right from excitation to detection and this is the concept of 2D inadequate. In summary what a 2D inadequate does is initially allow the double quantum coherences associated with, associated with two carbon 13 spins which are coupled to evolve during a variable T 1 period. The T 1 period is varied because a two dimension version and reconvert them back to detectable single quantum magnetization carbon magnetization ok and we are detecting carbon by doing of course, decoupling of protons. So, in this case what is going to happen in the F 1 dimension there is evolution of carbons in at the double quantum frequency. So, where the peaks come when there is the evolution of some of the chemical shifts you always get the peaks at the sum of the chemical shift delta 1 plus delta 2 of the coupled carbons. So, the two carbons are coupled having chemical shift 1 and 2 here C 1 and C 2 and in each peak in the double quantum dimension pertains to the chemical shift which is sum of chemical shift individual carbons that is what is the think uh, that is where the cross peak comes in the f 1 dimension. Of course, this is how the spectrum looks like and a hypothetical molecule hypo or a realistic spectrum we have 4 peaks 4 carbons and in the f 2 dimension what you are going to get peaks at the corresponding single quantum chemical shift. See you have 4 peaks here 1 2 3 for each 4 carbons each carbon if you come down here along this axis it will give you the chemical shifts carbon chemical shifts for individual carbons that is fine, but in the f 1 dimension what is going to happen you are going to go along this axis and this is for 3 and 4 peaks coupled and this axis correspond to double quantum dimension or double quantum chemical shift corresponding to chemical shift sum of chemical shift 3 and 4. This one for cross correlated peaks between 2 and 3 and this axis gives me chemical shift corresponding to carbon sum of carbon 2 and 3 chemical shifts. This is chemical shift corresponding to sum of 1 and 2 carbon chemical shift that is how the F 2 F 1 dimension always gives chemical shifts at the sum of the coupled carbons whereas, in the di direct dimension it is analogous to your single quantum carbon 13 spectrum where you get carbon 13 chemical shifts. If you carefully observe here each of this peak is a doublet because the A x spin system two carbons when they are coupled I said the A x spin I have already discussed in the purple nomenclature a x spin spins when two spins are coupled each of them will be a doublet of equal intensity exactly this is a doublet this is a doublet these are all doublets. So, that is how it comes another interesting thing what is going to happen is we are applying carbon 13 proton broadband decoupling all through the sequence this is an advantage is there is a benefit of NOE and the enhancement in the sensitivity that is an advantage when I come to NOE maybe next class or we, we another class after that I am discussing more about NOE there we will sh show what happens if I irradiate a particular proton and the NOE is, is takes place to the adjacent carbon or adjacent nuclei but depending upon whether homonuclear heteronuclei what is the percentage of enhancement we can calculate we will discuss that later. But please remember now like I said in the carbon 13 NMR when I was analyzing the benefit of applying decoupling power all through the sequence is 
NOE enhancement in the signal. So, sensitivity becomes better that is all. Now, how do you interpret the today inactive Q spectrum? Correlations are made by following the horizontal traces parallel to F2 axis and then you have to go vertically up. This is what we do. The carbon connectivity is, is established by sequentially going through horizontal and vertical pathway. Similar to your COSI. COSI we know we got to diagonal peak went like this and then go like this we went like a stepwise manner exactly here also we have to do it. But another thing what you should understand is you are going to get a you know a diagonal here which is hypothetically there is no diagonal I have written opposite a diagonal written like this it is called the double quantum diagonal coming you know at the center of each of these peaks if you draw a line you get a diagonal that is called a pseudo diagonal double quantum diagonal which does not exist just to show you people I have written here ok. So, the you can establish the connectivity like this horizontally and then vertically we will really do that analysis and then find out. Of course, I told you there are no diagonal peaks, but still the midpoint of all these pin pairs if you join take it and draw a line I told you just now a pseudo diagonal can be created that is called pseudo DQ double quantum diagonal it comes when at places where f 1 is equal to twice f 2 ok in the f 1 frequency is equal to twice f 2 you have a pseudo diagonal in the uh, inadequate actually there exists no diagonal, but you can draw a pseudo diagonal joining the center point of all this coupled pairs that is a analogous to a diagonal called a pseudo diagonal it is like this ok. So, each cross peak is a doublet with a splitting of JCC carbon carbon coupling similar to your AX pin case. So, there is a pseudo diagonal doublet now you understood almost how to interpret I will uh, tell you here how we can uh, do that simply start with one of the peak here which you know something which you, uh, we are confidently you can assign assign that peak let us say this is 4 here come vertically down you hit a peak and of course horizontally if you go you hit another peak this is a f1 axis where sum of two chemicals should be between this and this will be there that means it is correlating to this this carbon is correlating to this one ok so the, this is the double quantum dimension sum of chemical shifts and each of them is a doublet cc coupling is there ok with that what we will do is after you establish connection from 3 to 4 come down again from 3 you hit another peak of course it is the same because chemical shift of same carbon same carbon is there now you from horizontal you from 4 turn 4 or carbon 4 you came horizontal hit a peak that is carbon 3 another carbon because these two together is giving a double quantum here come down vertically you hit a peak that is same chemical shift same carbon there is no difference. Now, from this point go horizontally hit another peak that is another carbon and this come down it is the same chemical shift go horizontally again you hit another carbon what we did here please remember always analysis of the diagonal in the inadequate spectrum is very simple all you have to do is start with a particular peak identify a chemical shift of that and then go horizontally you will know it is coupled to which carbon that carbon chemical shift is known these two are correlated coupled to each other come down and then again go horizontally you will hit another carbon come down go horizontally hit another carbon. So, always when you are coming vertically down you are in the same chemical shift when you are going horizontally you will hit another carbon which is coupled to this carbon like this you can trace out all the carbon connectivities the interpretation of the carbon that in inadequate spectrum is fairly simple all you need to do is identify one carbon go horizontally vertically horizontally vertically keep going like a step function you will get all the assignments made 
that is what it is. Let us see the 2 D inadequate spectrum which is always recorded in the magnitude mode of n butanol a molecule like this. This is what I said we analyzed this just now. Now, I have no I know the structure of the molecule also we know this is C A 3 C A 3 always comes here high field. So, confidently we can say this is the carbon 4 right come to identify that and this axis correspond to sum of chemical shifts delta 3 plus delta 4 and this is corresponding to from 4 to 3 come down and come here this is delta 2 plus delta 3 come down here this is delta 1 plus delta 2 because this is 1 this is how we can do it. We will now go ahead and try to analyze a, a given molecule get all the carbon connectivities all the carbon connectivities in a simpler possible way. Of course, before you go to inadequate you should have some knowledge about assignments of protons or carbons some how do you do that of course, you use other experiments like COSI, TOXI or HSQC or multiplicity edited HSQC like that HMBC whatever it is you can use that. So, that you have some idea where to start. So, we will adapt that strategy we will take the for this molecule COSI spectrum carbon 13 proton multiplicity edited HSQC carbon 13 proton HMBC and then using these we also analyze inadequate spectra all the four we can analyze for this molecule then you will know about the structure of this molecule all right let us start like this this is a proton proton cosy how do you interpret this one of course if you carefully see in this axis there are only two protons i have already told you 100 times how we can interpret the phenyl protons chemical shift or spectrum corresponding to the protons from the phenyl group. Here there are only two ortho protons each proton experiences ortho coupling. So, this will be experiencing ortho coupling to this this is experiencing ortho coupling to this. So, each of them should be a doublet and the identical separation should be there. So, if you carefully look at it we have two doublets of identical separation I would fairly say these are the two carbons which form which you can see from the cosy you can identify that very easily no difficulty at all one spin system is identified already this correlation is established between proton 6 and 7. Now, what about the others you have 3 more in the 3 more you carefully if you see you can understand this proton experiences 2 couplings, but remember when the nitrogen is attached here this ortho coupling will be smaller than this one we have analyzed in the earlier case example. So, it should be a doublet of a doublet where can you see doublet of a doublet here clearly you can see two this bunch which is a doublet of a doublet I can confidently assign that to H 3 ok start with that come down you are hitting 2 peaks 2 class peaks ok go down complete it ok it could be H 3 is kind of coupled to another one. Now, again go by this this will be ortho coupling larger this is smaller from the separation you can say which is 4 and which is 2 easily that is why I will say this is H 4 that separation is much larger larger ortho coupling compared to the other one. So, I will complete that square. So, I can assign H 3 and H 4 then of course, H 3 also correlates to H 2 there is a cross peak further this H 2 is also is also correlated to this one ok H 2 is also correlated to H 3 of course, H 2 is also correlated to this one ok H H 4 and H 2 both are correlated to H 3 fine we are now we can make the assignment of all the protons for this molecule using cosy we will go further next it is a multiplicity edited HSQC spectrum, but of course you see all the peaks are of similar sign same sign there is no peak with negative sign what does it tell you I told you multiplicity edited 
if there are negative if there is a negative sign they are all correspond to carbon attached to two protons they are ch2 carbons ch and ch3 carbons are always opposite in sign that's what i told you when we interpreted the multiplicity edited hsqc spectrum now the all these things tells me they are all odd proton attached carbons of course looking at the molecule they are all single proton attached carbons very easily you can make the assignment because i know already the, we have assigned the proton so this is h7 correlating to c7 go along this axis you get h chemical shift and along this axis you get carbon chemical shift h3 c3 h6 c6 h2 c2 h4 c4 all the carbons and their attached pro, uh, proton chemical shifts can be obtained for five of them there are three plus two five but other carbons you don't know how do you place it how do you get the carbon skeleton of the molecule it is not so simple so what we will do is we will go to inadequate now very easily we can start make the, making the assignments of course protonated carbons we have assigned already here in the multiplicity edited hsqc now here we have protonated carbons attached assigned here most of this thing so after the 10 carbons here not uh, okay 6 plus 4 the 9 carbons uh, there are 9 carbons here out of okay forget nitrogen there are 6 plus 3 9 carbons out of 9 carbons 5 are protonated we could assign the remaining 4 only we have to make the assignment what we will do is the one which we are confident we know definitely we can't make this, this carbon that correspond to CH3 carbon start with that and of course this is a double quantum diagonal very you can see that Car start with carbon 7 if you carefully see it is a double light this is a double light it is a x spin system start with that go horizontally you hit that that has to be carbon 6 come down you hit go horizontally then you see carbon 5 go up go horizontally you hit carbon 10 at the same time carbon 10 has two correlations one for carbon 4 other for carbon 3 ok ok see, see this one carbon 4 carbon 3 and then you complete this you go to carbon 2 and C7 also correlates to other one that is C8 and you can complete it and you go to C9 all the carbon skeleton can be easily assigned this is the beauty of inadequate experiment what you could not get it from HSQC what you could not get it from other experiment you can trace each carbon skeleton which carbon is sitting next to which can be assigned by using inadequate experiment ok. So, finally using this of course we, this is another molecule where we have to get the structure using inadequate other things since the time is getting over what I am going to do of course this needs bit more explanation I will come back in the next class we will again take this and then continue further. So, since the time is getting up I am going to stop here today what we did is of course to summarize we started discussing about a new experiment called 2D inadequate which is used for correlation of dilute spins like carbon 13 carbon 13 all other experiments we have done HSQC, HS toxic, OC, HMBC they are different type of correlation of homonuclear spins or one of them is abundant spin other is a dilute spin but he, in this case we can correlate only di dilute spins pulse sequence is very simple it is a spin occur sequence followed by uh, uh, another 90 pulse which will create the multiple quantum and then you create a double quantum filter so filter out this thing and then uh, use the third pulse which convert into single quantum and then start detecting the signal and you are going to get a pseudo multiple uh, double quantum diagonal in the inadequate use that and then assignment becomes very simple each peak is like couple like a AX spin system doublet start with one of them known to you go horizontally come down vertically horizontally vertically like that keep continuing you will be able to make assignment of all the carbon skeleton of the molecule you require some help of COSI, TOXI etc other experiments you can use combine them and do it and we tried analyze this molecule one of the molecule we will uh, go slowly again and then understand it in the next class thank you very much